to Zampala and welcome to her story. Our guest for today is a civil engineer by profession, but at the moment she's the only online gamer from Bhutan who's making a living by playing online. She is an inspiration to many young people. She is Pindara Kadorji, popularly called as Pinda Panda. Welcome guys! This chair, this is where I fought most of the time. I don't know why I said that. This is where all the magic happens. Thank you so much for taking out your time. I know you're visiting Bhutan uh, for a very short while, but thank you so much. So, how long are you here in Bhutan this time? Just uh, uh, six days. Six days. Okay. I don't get a long holiday, so. Uh, so let's start off by talking about uh, your parents and you know uh, where you were born. I was born here. Um, I'm from Changanka, and uh, yeah, I grew up here. I studied a little bit in India, and back and forth. And, um, and why just finally graduated from there. What about your early education, like your primary and all? Started off at Sun, uh, Sunshine, mm -hmm. uh, two years there, and then Rinchen Kinfin Primary School, a mm -hmm. couple of years there, and then I moved to um, St. Joseph Convent mm -hmm. in Kalimpong. Studied about eight, two years there, and after that I came here, I studied in Jiminamgil. I changed a lot. Mm -hmm. Studied in Jiminamgil for three, four, three years. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to YHSS. That's where I graduated my high school. Okay. And then you got a scholarship? To uh, to not really. I got a scholarship in down south in India, but I didn't take it. So my parents, they decided to send me in to Malaysia to study. That's where I pursued my degree. So you have a bachelor's degree in yes. civil engineering? Yeah, construction management and civil engineering. And. Uh, you straight away started working in Malaysia. Did you ever think of coming back? Or? I actually, it, uh, it took me three and a half years to graduate, and I started working the next day itself because I, I, because I realized it was a job. Uh, it was it's very hard getting jobs here, and it's not always easy. And I see a lot of people were struggling. My seniors, they were talking about how they were um, slacking behind because there was no availability on the jobs. So I had to be smart about it. I had to be like, I, maybe I could take the experience from Malaysia and come back home someday and then work here. So I decided to work there for about a couple of years. And as soon, like I literally graduated today and tomorrow is the day I started working because I didn't want to waste any time because I, I felt like I had to, I had to get onto it. And I worked at a construction company and uh, it's a, it was a very small company for three months. It was a basic salary. It was, it was like any other job. I had to wake up at 5 a.m., which is very, very painful for me. It was, uh, yeah. And then I got home at like 8 p.m. because I had to take the, routes, the train, two hours, it was very far. It was, you can say it was very, very challenging for me. And uh, yeah, but I used to play games a lot. And every time I would come back home, uh, it would be 8 p.m., 9 p.m.-ish. Sometimes I would play Dota, which, mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, the game that I love, for about two, three hours. It would be around 1 a.m., then I would go to bed wake up at five, it would be the same routine. Sometimes I would try to stop and I, I told myself that I had to stop playing because now it was like I have, to, I have to get used to the adulthood. But then I thought, why, why should I stop? Because this is the only thing that keeps me happy. I, I have like, my family's away back, in, back here in Bhutan and I was, I was living on my own and it was very hard. So the game was the only mm -hmm. thing that kept me sane, you would say, like happy and like I was uh, not feeling lonely or something. So and during the weekends, I would just play all day and night and I, I got used to it. And that's when the idea of um, YouTube and videos um, mm -hmm. came to me. Is, is it like, how did, how did you get uh, introduced to games? Like games. Mm -hmm. um, and how did you start off? And how young were you when you started off playing games? I think I was two years old. And my grandma, she loves, she loved playing Nintendo games like Mario. And there was, uh, there was a game called Super Tank, you know, where you have the small cassettes, you put it in, there's like 200 games or something in there. And yeah, it was it would be, it would get very competitive with her because she is like the solo player who doesn't like to get 
she who doesn't like lose and I was this tiny little uh, blob there beside her who used to just you know I, I would always be the second player to her and she would play so much my grandfather used to get irritated at us but yeah she's I think she's basically the first ever person who taught me how to who introduced me to do gaming. You, do you think you get that genes from her? I think so because she even now she she's on the phone she plays a lot she plays so much games and it's actually amazing. She, 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 I mean, it's not competitive games, but she just keeps playing a lot. And she's the one who, um, I would say, officially introduced me to gaming. And that's after that, it was just normal gaming. I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't too addicted, I would say. But it was like everybody else, you know, kids. We love to play games, so that was about it. Okay, and then I know you loved uh, playing online games and Dota and all. So how come the shift from civil engineering and Gaming, um, playing games online. Like I have my cousins, my brothers and all, they used to play a game um, called Warcraft and I would watch them play but I would never play but because I thought maybe I wouldn't get interested. Before Dota 2 there was Dota 1 and a lot of kids played here and uh, for us girls we were, you know, we would, we would do our own stuff, the boys, the boys would play, that was the norm before. I would want to play but I was like maybe it's not my thing. But when I got to college, I had plenty of time. Uh, then I, the Dota 2, with the new game, which just got launched, I played that and I got hooked just like that. Mm -hmm. And I realized how much I was passionate about the game. And yeah, after that, it was nonstop. I, there was this one time where I played for three days straight away. I didn't get no out of, no sleep. Wow. I only had pizzas, french fries, and, oh, uh, yeah, my mom would kill me for this, but <laughs> yeah, that happened. And you were still fine after three yeah, days? Yeah, I was, I was fine. I kept myself hydrated and I slept for another two days. So yeah. I wouldn't recommend it though. It's very, very, very unhealthy. I know. Very unhealthy. Okay. And um, then you moved on to playing online. So yeah. you became a professional gamer. So um, how did that happen? How did the whole journey start? Not l really like a professional gamer. I just, I would just say very addictive. Um, I, because the classes were not that heavy, even though the classes were heavy, I would somehow manage. My mom would always, my mom never disapproved of me gaming. She would always be like balanced, like you can do whatever you want, but always know it's the balance to the, so I would keep studies afloat as well. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, um, maintaining gaming too at the same time. And after, it w it's been like six years since I've been playing this game. And after college, I, I couldn't stop playing at all. I was. I was very hooked on to the game, and but once I started working, it was lesser because I didn't get much time. And uh, in this construction, the the company that I told you about, I was working there for about three months, and I was I was I already started doing like YouTube videos and Facebook videos. I started off with Facebook while I was working. That's when I started um, right after college. I was like I could do it. I had very little time, but I was, I was like, now I'm, I'm a person, I'm like, now is the time I have to grab it while it's hot or something. And I used to watch a lot of YouTube videos throughout my, um, my studies and all that. And I just thought to myself, um, these guys, these famous YouTubers, they started off as a nobody. They started off with one subscriber, with one or a couple of people watching them. And now they grew up, like they grew their audience, they're huge. And I'm like, if they can do it, why not us? Like, you know, why not the people who are watching them? And I'm like, I should make, I should start as well. Cause I'm a person like who's very talkative and I like, you know, recording, although it gets very cringy when you're recording yourself, you know, and, and then, but I, I didn't mind it. So I started off with, uh, I was like, okay, I play this game. I don't think there are many people who make videos on this game. Like there were videos, there were other people who would make jokes about it, but they were, Nobody, there was nobody, not even like men who made uh, live videos on those uh, games. So I was like, I could try. I'm, gonna, I'm like, even if it fails, it doesn't matter. Like, I, I should try. So I made this mom versus Dota video, which was the first ever video I made mm -hmm. on Facebook. I had no followers on Facebook. I had like my friends, my family, my family's friends, you know how it goes when you ask them to like your page. So I made this first video, I uploaded on it. It was normal I got like a few hundred views then after precisely four days I just checked my phone and there was notifications was like it was blowing up I had like 999 I was like must be a glitch or something then I opened it up it garnered about 50,000 views I was like what's happening and people wanted me to make more and after some time it got like four million views 
I was shocked at how much attention it got. I was like, okay, I got to do it. Weekends was the only time I could make videos. After that, I make small videos and it started. That's how I started out off as Binda Banda. You left your job to play. Yes, mm. I did. Do you regret your decision? Oh, how no, that happen? was the <laughs> best decision I've ever made. Mm -hmm. The resignation letter, you should have seen my face. I was like happily typing and I'm like, I'm quitting and um, thank you for everything and bye bye. Here you go, letter. It was awesome. Like, did you have to sit for an interview? To oh, I had I had to do an audition uh, for EGG Network. That's the uh, gaming channel in Malaysia and no Southeast Asia, the first gaming channel. I had to do the audit. I had to go for an audition. Audition, and I was working. I so I had to take a leave, and I was like, I could try. I mean, I could. I should just try, and I, I was. I didn't expect to get it at all. I went in there, there were, there were like 200 other candidates. I'm like, oh yeah, no way, I'm gonna get it. Like I'm a foreigner and they wouldn't take a foreigner, I thought. The audition went horribly. It was horrible, <laughs> it was so horrible. I stuttered, they asked me to do some, there were like three judges and they asked me to do some um, casting, commentating on games. Yeah, I stuttered, I got, I, Let's just, I don't, I don't feel like recapping it, but let's just say I was, uh, it was a disaster. But before I left, I was like, I'm not gonna give up easily. I asked them to, I was like, um, can you please check my channel? Like, I have a YouTube channel, I have a Facebook channel, I have videos there, maybe that would um, somehow help uh, me uh, with this job. And they were like, there was this one judge, he was like, okay, I'll check it out. And I was like, I'm not gonna get it. And after three days, I get this call, and they're like, so shall we talk about salary and contract? I'm like. Who's this? And they're like, oh, you don't you remember you gave an audition? I was like shocked. Mm -hmm. I, you have no idea. That moment was, I'll never forget it. It was, um, I couldn't explain it. it. Feelings were rushing over. I got red. I couldn't speak on the phone, but I was cool. I was like, oh, oh yeah, okay, fine, sure, whatever. <laughs> Let's, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, that's about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it tough being a woman while oh. you know, with online games and all that? Because it's a male-dominated. It is. It is a super male-dominated um, community. And that's a very tricky question, actually. I would. It's like a 50-50 um, situation. It is hard for female um, gamers to be professionals because they aren't treated equally. Mm -hmm. But most people now that um, uh, now that we know that so many there are so many female gamers, everybody's trying to. Um, level up, lev um, and um, people, organizations, everybody's trying to push female gamers, which is a really great improvement. Um, but I would still say there is a lot of challenges because, uh, you know, in everything, like not just esports, in sports, literally in every aspect of uh, like jobs and everything, is always a challenge for female. So it's the same kind of situation, but I think we do have some kind of upper hand, like for me. I think the reason, one of the reasons I, I grew up, like I grew fast is because I was a female as well, because they haven't seen a female doing those videos. And since because I was a female, I think I got like a little boost out of that. So it's kind of like a 50-50 situation, but it is, it, is, it is a huge struggle still. I've been wanting to ask you, so Pinda Panda, so what, did you come up with the name yourself or? And my mom, she, when she gets angry, um, when, you know, when we, when we don't go for uh, our food, she would, like, she would call me like, yeah, when she calls my name Panda, that's when I know she, she's angry. So yeah, because of her and because my first name is Pinda, I was like, yeah, Pinda Panda. It was not a big deal, it was just something that came along. Oh, okay. And you also have a merchandise yeah, uh, with, uh, yes. series of shirts and you know sweatshirts and all that. So how did all that happen? I, I, um, I, uh, there's a couple of kids in Trashigong. Uh, they, um, I, the sole, the sole pr um, objective of the merchandise was to, uh, to give those, those, those profits to uh, the needy ones mm -hmm. and like my aunt my friends we were talking about how I could help them and they were like dude you're you're a little popular so you could probably have your merchandise on your own and I'm like it's a lot of work but maybe I could do it so I didn't do a lot I did about um, 2,000 shirts and uh, all together and they sold very fast I was actually amazed. but the work load is like I was doing everything on my own so it was way too much but yeah whatever I got so 
to only the I thought the best way to help those kids and uh, would be like to give all the profits from the merchandise to them. So that's what I did. I didn't make a second merchandise. Uh, that was my first batch ever. I so you're not gonna make any. Yeah, I actually that's there's a new project coming up. Uh, the the merchandise people who are doing like who um, in Malaysia the Coca Cola. Um, they have a they have a group of people who do the merchandise. So they approached me recently. Uh, um, yeah, we're gonna, we're launching my merchandise and like so that's that's in talks right now. So I'm planning to give my uh, profits from there to the kids as well. But this time they do all the shipping, everything. The last time I was doing everything on my own, so that was it was difficult. So I could not continue after that. So you had to spend for everything? Yeah, exactly. I had to look at the designs, I had to get the shirts myself, I had to test it out, I had to go to the shop myself. And it was nice. It was a lot of kids, uh, a lot of kids who got them and they were very happy. And so somehow made me feel like I achieved two goals at the same time, you know, give the money to them, to the other kids and make the other kids happy as well. So it was kind of a balance, which was really nice. Would you tell us how much were you able to donate to the children in the East? Uh, it was a mixture actually. Um, we donated um, about, because uh, we didn't donate money, we got them like jackets and everything because mm -hmm. that was recommended by the thing. So I, I took some art, like the, I don't know, actually it's my manager who's, uh, she keeps track of uh, how much we made and how much he oh, spent there, yeah. I know you have your family away from Malaysia, yeah. you know you're from Bhutan, so how often do you visit Bhutan? I try my best to visit as often as possible because as you grow older, you realize that your parents, your grandparents grow older as well. They're getting even older. So um, I come about like two, three, four times at the max in a year. I try my best to do more than that because I feel like you can make money anywhere, but time is something you can't I know, buy. You can never yeah, so. What are a few things that you like to do when you're back home? Oh, like food. Home? First thing, is my grandmother's food. Her, she makes me gyodati, that's my uh, favorite. And after that, I go berserk in town. I ask my friends what's good here. They're like, oh, this cafe is new, that cafe is new. I try out everything and see how it's up. So you live alone in Malaysia. Do you even do you I, know I how do, to cook? Yes, I do know how to cook, but I do not get the time at all. So I have to order most of the times, which is very unhealthy, but I do try to cook. But the, my profession, it uh, takes a lot of time. So. So uh, at the moment you're still an online gamer, uh, yes. are you still hosting the... No, I actually left, I worked at EGG for two years and I left just last year in August. Uh, our contract was for another three years but I wanted to leave because I was doing so much better on my own. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I, I decided to uh, resign from the job and uh, be my independent self. And uh, you know, there are so many young uh, girls who look up to you as an inspiration. What do you think are some qualities that an online gamer needs? Um, Other than the unhealthy habits. Unhealthy <laughs> habits, yes. That's, uh, that's something you don't want to get used to. Mm -hmm. I think you should just, first and foremost, if you force it, it wouldn't come naturally. That's, you have to fa uh, find your passion, not just gaming and everything you do. If you don't, I mean, it's it's always good to try, but once you try and if you feel like it's not meant for you, then you should not push it, is what I believe. Um, and if you really want to be an online gamer, um, I think what you have to do is you have to dedicate a lot of time in gaming. Because gaming is also a profession now. It's actually one of the highest paying profession, I believe, esports. It's growing so much. And so just playing the game wouldn't cut because millions of people are playing, but what makes you special, you have to figure out, figure that out on your own. I couldn't help with that as well, because th the only person who knows yourself better than anyone is, it's you. So yeah, I would just ask them to be their self first and then. And um, as a child, when you were growing up, did you ever think that you were going to be a professional? On no, game? never. Even now, I'm like, how did I land up here? What happened? And people, I mean, my, my my grandma, my mom would, they would always say, you're gonna do good someday, you know, but I'm like, I was, I always thought, you know, when they said good, I'd be like a, doing a normal job and something. But yeah, I, it's still, it's still, um, it's still a shock for me that, and uh, like how much, how much I've done and how far I've come, especially given like, uh, given the fact that I was doing that job that I didn't like so much. Mm -hmm. So it's incredible.
So, what are, what are your future plans now? My future plans? Well, it's very vague. I, didn't, I don't think about the future too much because I'm like, I could die anytime. That's my, I'm like, I, anything could happen. So I would rather focus on the present. I don't think about saving too much as well because like I said, I'm, I'm a person who kind of wanna, who really believes in living in the present. So I try to focus more on what I'm doing right now. Future, I'm like, whatever happens, it'll happen. I'll tackle it, you know? I feel that like people should be smart rather than hardworking, especially right now in this era. Do you plan on settling down someday? Of course, like there's no place like home. Every time I come back home, I'm like, I just want to be here. I don't want to leave. But the internet is so bad. It makes me want to cry. I tried playing a uh, day before. <sighs> It was it was very hard. It was very hard. even even given with the Wi-Fi as well. It was very bad. So I'm just hoping. I'm just praying that the Wi-Fi gets better, internet gets better, and that's when I can actually promote esports in Bhutan as well. Like esports has so many jobs if you want, but internet plays a huge role. Like my one of my jobs right now is Facebook is paying me to stream on Facebook, and I could push Facebook to in this region as well in Bhutan as well and. There are so many gamers out there, young people who are playing, and they could earn just by playing games. But the internet is really, really sad. Children and marriage, what are your comments oh, on that? Another 10 years, I don't know. Well, lastly, any message for our viewers who is watching? Of course, um, watching this my message uh, would be that everything is very challenging. But if you don't try, you would never know what could have been. So it's always better to try and fail than not try at all. All right. Thank you so much for no, talking thank to you us. For having thank me. you so much. Just before we wind up, let's check out what the Pindu Bandit's five favorites and five facts about her. My favorite color, black, white, and gray. The Lion King, always. Uh, Halo by Beyonce. Uh, Gyodati by my grandmother. Anything written by Enid Blyden. It's a, he's a kid's author, but he's the one who gave me a lot of inspiration during my childhood, childhood days. I eat a lot of potatoes. It's actually, people say it's very unhealthy. I have potatoes, potatoes for breakfast, potatoes for lunch, and potatoes for night. I feel like it completes my life somehow. Kewa is something that was meant for me, I believe. I don't Gonna be embarrassing. That's not embarrassing. I fart a lot. <sighs> yeah, it's it's something natural. And I, over the years, I've grown very comfortable with uh, farting. It's very very comfortable. I get sad very easily when I see animals. I turned vegetarian for four years now because of animal slaughter. So it's very easy for me to, like if I see a dog just passing by, I, I have to stop and be like, hey, good morning, man. Then I drive off. I love my grandmother so much that I feel like if she is, she, something happens to her, I feel like I wouldn't, I couldn't exist. Yeah, she's my number one rock. I'm very confident in a lot of things that I do. I make, I do mistakes, but I do them very confidently. And then I realize it later.
Would you rather be free or be totally safe? I would rather be free. Because uh, like being safe is, is, is a smart choice, but being free is a choice that not many people have. And I'd rather have the freedom to do what I want and do it than be safe and do nothing at all. Would you rather be held in high regard by your parents or by your friends? I want to say both, but I would slightly lean a little towards my family because what my family thinks of me is the most important um, thing for me rather than anybody else in the world. Like, I couldn't even give a damn about, um, before I would as a kid, but now I've, I've, after so much experience and everything, I've learned that family is what matters and how they think of you is what shapes you into a person and me as a person right now, it's all because of my family. Would you rather have three kids or no money or no kids with three million dollars? I would have no kids with three million dollars because I have a very good reason because um, uh, I've, I don't know, I've, I've, I have this feeling that I want to adopt as well and the reason why I would have, I would choose no kids with three million dollars because with that money I could help the other kids, which is they need more. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a one, like I'm a drop in the ocean. Where even if I didn't have kids, it wouldn't make a huge difference, I guess, other than for my family. But I'm good with it. So I'd rather have the money and help others. Hey, would you rather lose the ability to lie or believe everything you're told? Uh, I would rather lose the ability to lie. Definitely that, you know, I like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to believe something that isn't true. I would say I'm very cancerous. When I say cancerous, gamers would understand that. I um, curse a lot of game, in the game, so that's one. I am, uh, it's supposed to be a good thing. I'm a little too empathetic. People think it's a good quality, but for me, it's a little, I'm a little too empathetic, which uh, kind of gets into my head sometimes. Um, I'm, a, I'm a perfectionist. That's, that's not a very good quality, but I, when I do something, when I work, I have to make sure that it's perfect. It's like, even when I'm, especially in my videos, I have to rewatch it like a hundred times and then I have to see like if it's perfect or not. So, yeah. Love dancing, I've always loved dancing. And another thing would be, um, Designing somehow, like not, not not shirts and all that, but designing, um, trying to design graphics in game, which is developing right now, but it's not a big thing.